Renaissance Capital was uh, one of the only analysts that was not in line with consensus regarding a hold stance on those interest rates. Uh, you were calling for a 50 basis point hike. Were you surprised then that Sanusi came out and chose a neutral stance yesterday? No, not exactly. Um, I think our stance was was that, you know, obviously uh, Lamido had reiterated that he wanted to keep the MPC at 12%. Uh, but we felt that, you know, the, MP, the MPC was not solely a decision of the CBN governor. Uh, you have other members on, on, the, t on the panel uh, who obviously decide, decide um, what happens with the MPC. So we felt that, you know, looking at the inflation pressures coming through from False, false subsidy removal uh, that we felt that a 50% hike was just, uh, justifiable. Uh, before we get into your uh, rationale behind that, just let's look at the re rationale behind uh, choosing to keep rates on hold at 12%. Uh, one of them was that inflation will come into a single digit mode by the end of the year and also concerns around the Eurozone and the impact that that's going to have uh, on the local economy. Just walk us through some of the comments that were made by Sanusi for the rationale behind this decision. Well, I think, uh, you know, the key, th key thing to focus there is that uh, Lamido feels that um, the short-term impact of the fall removal, of the fall subsidy removal, uh, it will be muted. Uh, and he feels that the long-term impact of removing subsidy from the economy um, will, will have, a, you know, will far outweigh um, the impact, the short-term impact of the removal. Um, you know, then that will come through in terms of infrastructure, um, infrastructure buildings, facilities, um, and obviously government deploying capital into where we need it to be deployed. Um, and also, if in effect, we reduce the pressure on the excess crude account. Uh, I think it's sort of the key reasons why he felt that we should keep the, the, the MPR at where, where it should be. Eurozone fears, of course, are, are you know, being spoken about across markets right now. We're starting to feel them um, here in South Africa in terms of the export market. Uh, what are the big highlights in terms of risk factors for Nigeria this year if we do have uh, a Greece defaulting and Portugal possibly following suit? I think, I think what we like to focus on for 2012 is, you know, uh, the execution of the reform, reform program. Uh, you know, I think there is good momentum on the power sector, sector by the Minister of Power. Um, we're seeing a lot of initiative from the Agric Minister in terms of removal of, of increased uh, custom duties on wheat and on rice. Um, so, we're, we're, you know, we're trying to see that, you know, there, there's a push to encourage production rather than consumption. Um, obviously, now there's more traction on the PIB bill and obviously with the removal of the first subsidy um, earlier this year. Um, all of these reforms, you know, we, we expect that if the execution is right, uh, should have a, ma a positive impact on, on the market. Uh, by and large, we also need to have the locals come through to the market. Um, as a the end of 2011, uh, foreign participation in our market was about 75%, uh, which means that locals basically accounted for 25. I think you know to also have a sustained rally, we need the locals to come through into the market uh, to support um, the story for Nigeria. Um, you know the, the market is cheap across the board. You know, and it, I think at certain levels, you know, it's about time people need to come back and start re-looking re at their positions and, and their view on the market. As you say, but that still hasn't uh, taken place uh, yet. You know, we've still got locals uh, concerned about losing. Uh, Capital preservation is, is top of their mind and concerned about losing money like they did when the stock market crashed. Uh, just focusing in on the bank sector, uh, what are your thoughts? You obviously had a call for a 50 basis point hike. Uh, what is that based on in terms of the type of credit growth that we're seeing right now? How do you, how do you believe that the market would be able to manage a hike in interest rates? Well, I think a hike in interest rates will be positive for the banks. Obviously, the banks tend to make... Uh, you know, tend to offer higher interest rates on, on loans um, in, in, the, in the interim. Um, I think that, you know, until we start publicizing new inflation numbers come through uh, into the market, um, you know, with regards to the effect of the first subsidy on, on the market, um, you know, it's largely not clear um, where, you know, what, this, you know, what the MP MPC committee will do in terms of the NPR. Um, I think that, you know, going forward, um, we need, you know, 
we just need to watch the market and see what inflation ha what happens with inflation. And of course, uh, the Naira has reacted, it seems, positively uh, versus where it was trading yesterday. It was at 162.39 in the market, uh, in the interbank market. It has strengthened slightly this morning to 161. Uh, to what extent is uh, the Naira and uh, Nigeria, in terms of the currency, going to benefit from higher yields and, and yield chases from the developed world this year? I think the NARA should stay at the band in which the CBN has guided. Um, you know, of note is that obviously the pressure on the NARA in terms of, uh, you know, demand from oil marketers uh, on, the, on the basis of the partial removal of the subsidy, um, that effect should, should, should reduce the, you know, the pressure we have on the, on the excess grid account. So I feel that, you know, the NARA should be able to stay stable at the levels in which the CBN governor has guided, which is 155 to 160. What, what trading levels are you looking at uh, for the rest of the week and how do you see the market reacting uh, to this uh, decision by uh, Sanusi? Uh, I mean, the market, if you look at the market, uh, you know, volumes still remain f very weak. Um, uh, we've been doing an average of about $10, $10 million. Um, yesterday, the market about $40 million. Um, but if you strip out the $30 million um, special trade uh, in Julius Berger, um, we're left with about $10 million. Um, I think we, we, we would like to see increased activity in the market. Um, and as we're approaching a reporting season from the banks, uh, we expect that we'll be seeing um, much more flows and much more activity in the market. Um, you know, largely, you know, key, key buy areas is, you know, obviously the banks, uh, still a lot of interest in the brewery sector, uh, still a lot of also interest in some, in some consumer names like Nestle um, and, um, you know, and, you know, and PZ Customs. Yeah. Uh, so we expect to still see some level of, of traction in those names. Uh, however, because the general sentiment is that, you know, brewery names and sort of some of the consumer names are fully rich, uh, fully, fully priced, uh, we'd like to see um, the momentum come through with the banks, so pull which back, are largely undervalued. Yeah, banks undervalued, and of course uh, the bureau is overvalued right now, so pull back on those. Uh, entry, a good entry point, Akin Bamadela, Akin Tolo, Africa Equity Sales Research Analyst from Renaissance Capital, uh, joining us there for his views on the market.